Hi guys, Mr. Ford here again. Uh, we're gonna work on the electricity packet for a little bit today. Um, we're gonna work on pages eight through 10, um, really seven through 10. I didn't mention that in Schoology or the other assignment paper, but um, we'll walk through it. Before we do that, we're gonna look at this, this picture here. So take a minute and just see if this would be possible to make in the real world. Okay, so hopefully you've had enough time to kind of uh, take a look at the picture and what's going on. So this is going to be an analogy for uh, circuits or how electricity or electrons move through conductors um, based upon water. So a lot of times water or rivers or pipes or traffic patterns or even just students walking through the hallway um, can be a good analogy for understanding all the ins and outs of electricity. So... The reason why this isn't possible um, is because usually water doesn't flow uphill um, for long distances, at least. So here we have, let's say, a waterfall. The water is going down. Um, so when it gets to the bottom, it might move up a little bit, but there's no way that it's going to move all the way back around to that same height again and go around cir cir cyclically. Um, there's another famous painting. Um, I forget who made it. Um, or drawing. I'll have to get my hands on it one day um, and show you guys. But um, so let's take a look at this. So assuming water could flow uphill, what in this picture is causing it to flow uphill? Good job, Chloe. Um, it is the gravitational potential energy um, that is stored right here. And then gravity is going down this way until it has no more gravitational potential energy. And then theoretically in this picture, it would have kinetic and move all around and then gain that gravitational potential and keep going around and around and around. But that's not gonna happen. Um, so thinking of the water, why is the water flowing? Because of a force due to gravity, right? So when we think of electricity, it's not necessarily gravity, but there is a difference of something. In gravity, it's a different, or gravitational potential energy. It's a difference in height or position above some refer reference point. It, with electricity, it's a difference in charge. So previously, the, we, locked, we took, took a look at um, if you have opposite charges, there is a difference, right? Um, and those charges, given the opportunity, will equal out. So this is what a battery does. If you remember back from chemistry, um, an electrolytic solution, uh, depending upon the setup, um, the electrolytes will flow and the electrons will, will move around. Um, so this is where our battery would actually be. You got your positive side of your battery and you got your negative side of your battery. Positive meaning uh, less electrons, positive, wait, sorry, positive meaning less electrons, negative meaning more electrons. So that's known as voltage. Voltage is what causes electricity to flow or electrons to flow. So if you look down the bottom here, they're kind of showing you then in, in this little line here that this area here, there's a electric potential, potential for electrons to flow because of that difference in charge. So if we connect a wire to it or this kind of section of that little stream or picture, the electricity will flow. So again, the electric potential differences in charge is known as voltage. And we measure that with volts. Something you'll see is all these words, all these units here are named after somebody. So that doesn't really give us the clearest picture, but we'll get into that later. Um, so we know what's causing the water to flow. Well, let's look at a way to explain or describe how the water's flowing. So in here, we would want to describe like, you know, how much water is going by, how fast is it going, what's the over volume per time. Uh, and that is known as electrical current. Very similar to the water analogy. You can see how it relates really well there. So this isn't necessarily the speed uh, that the water is flowing. It's more the amount of charge per time. So when we see here, we have an ampere. You may have heard of amps. Um, that's a dangerous part of electricity. Some of um, you probably remember from the winter at some point, we played with the Van de Graaff generator, the, the static electricity thing. We're just walking across the carpet um, in the winter and then touching something and getting a little shock. That voltage could have been anywhere, depending upon if it was just your hand or so a static in your jacket, between 20,000 and 70,000 um, volts. 
So a lot of voltage. Voltage isn't the thing that necessarily is painful or lethal to people, humans. It's the current. It's the amps that go through. Um, so again, an amp is just simply a coulomb per second. So it's the overall charge moving through the wire um, or resistor per second. So then we have ohms or electrical resistance. In this picture, we see this little zigzag. That's showing you that the water would slow down because that's to change direction and go back and forth. Um, so uh, a resistor in a circuit is anything that's converting that energy. Usually a light bulb can, is the easiest way to think of a resistor or in a circuit board, they're doing different things. Um, those resistors are doing different functions within that circuit. Uh, let's see what else we need to say. So that's basically what we're looking at as far as electrical current, voltage, and resistance. There's only three things that play a role there. Um, and before we jump into something else, let me take a look at my notes if I want to do that yet. No, not quite yet. We'll talk about that in a minute. Um, so we're going to take a jump to the packet. And we're on page seven. I lied. We were going to be on page eight, but we're going to start off with the first half of page seven, and then we're going to skip some spots. So parts. Uh, so again, we're defining what electrical current is here. It's the amount of charge that goes through a wire per time. Um, similar to our speed equals distance over time or velocity is displacement over time equation. This is the current. Current is um, represented with the symbol I or the letter I, sorry. Um, delta Q is the charge or difference in charge. And then we rec recognize delta T. So in any problem, um, so that kind of guess method, identifying the variables that you know, what are you missing, what equation will work. So in this case, we wanted to determine the total charge that passes through the wire. So we're looking at charge in coulombs, that capital C. So we're going to use that I equals Q over T. And we know I is 3.5 amps for two reasons. It's measured in amps and also that it literally tells us the current. And we're going to be looking at finding the total charge or Q. And the time is three minutes. Now, if you remember, any times that we've dealt with all year have been in seconds. Um, and an amp is considered a, or defined as a coulomb per second. So we have to convert that to three minutes. So how many seconds are there in three minutes? Good job, Rachel. It is going to be 180 seconds. So we just simply solve for that Q and we get 630 coulombs of charge. Now the cool part, which I think, I'm not really a, a chemistry type person. That wasn't one of my favorite classes in high school or college. Um, maybe the immaturity was there, just now I think
And number two, given the two million electrons that the capacitor wire, what is the current? So again, we're trying to look at if we have a um, so if we have the number of electrons and we know the charge per electron. But we just want to be consistent uh, with writing the correct SI unit. So then number three, um, given a 60 amp hour battery. What's an amp hour? It's a little weird. Um, eventually you guys are going to know what this is. Perfect. So, first thing, again, 60, uh, it's going to be 60 for every 60 seconds. Um, I didn't realize in, in high school or maybe even college. Think about it for a minute. Good job. Um, so we want to look at the independent, how they, the independent variable, how it changes 
uh, or sorry, the dependent changes according to the multiple or individual independent variables. So what do we say that we, or how do we want to rearrange that? Good job, Maddie. A IR. You're going to hear a lot of um, kind of like acronyms um, or just sayings. It's a shame we don't have Mr. Mackman next door. Um, you'd hear him saying VIP and VIR and VERP and VIR Saka Pakar all the time. Um, so hopefully we'll, we'll be looking at that. So here we see VIR. That's an easy way to remember the equation. Um, but it's kind of like Newton's second law. It's a little bit easier to comprehend if we look at it in terms of i equals v over r. Because again, i was the current, v was the voltage or like the electrical push kind of, or the force behind it. And the resistance would be kind of like friction. So if I increase the current, that's not gonna do anything to the friction. But if I increase or decrease or increase or decrease the push or the friction, meaning the voltage or the resistance, that will have an effect on the current. At the end of the day, right at this moment, do you need to understand all that? No, great, if you do, um, the bare minimum is just to follow along, get used to the equations, and then um, from what I've heard towards the end of this month, we will be able to have um, virtual lessons so you guys can ask questions I'm working on. Uh, see if I can get approved to do something like audio, like you guys can talk or chat. Uh, we can't do videos, but then I'll be able to use like this, you know, little app and draw as like a whiteboard. So we'll see how that works. So back to the packet. So let's say we have number one, an LED bulb. Does anybody know what LED stands for? No, Jenna, that's not right. It's not a light bulb that has lead in it. Um, anybody else? Anybody? Anybody want to use Google? Nice job, Amanda. It stands for um, light emitting diode. That's what an LED screen is. Um, so it's going to draw 300. What's MA? I thought it was just A for amps. Oh yeah, milliamps, 300 milliamps. So anytime we've seen things like that using the unit prefixes, SI unit prefixes, we're gonna have to convert it. Um, so let's see here. We're gonna look for the resistance. Here's our equation. So we have the voltage, 1.5 volts. The current is milliamps. So do we wanna get bigger or smaller? Right, the number needs to get smaller by not a million, but a thousand, three decimal places. And we could just solve for the resistance and we would get five ohms. What about for B, find the current in the battery if it's weakened to only 1.4 volts? So V equals IR again. 1.2 volts, looking for current this time. And it's still that five ohms now. And plug that into our calculator and we would get 0 0.240 amps or 240 milliamps. Okay, so we're gonna go through um, kind of a couple definitions and we're gonna spend a whole lot of time on them. Uh, we'll get back to them at another point. So it says DC circuits. So this year, um, we're only looking at DC. D, what does DC stand for? Anybody know? Nice, Andrew. It does stand for District of Columbia. 
uh, but we are not looking for Washington, D.C. We're looking for D.C. circuits. And no, it's not the shoe brand. Okay, so I'll tell you. It stands for direct current. So anything that uses a battery, not an electrical outlet, uses DC current. So this is why when you charge things that have a battery and you charge them by plugging them into a wall socket, you need that little cube, whether it's the bigger box or cube on a laptop or iPad and then the smaller ones um, for phones. It's going to convert that alternating current, that AC current. AC DC is not just a band. Um, but we're only going to look at that direct current. No need to know that right now. Circuits. Circuit literally means circle. So anytime we have an electrical circuit, it means the electricity is going in a loop. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle, but it's going in kind of a cyclical pattern. An open circuit. Um, this is something that the switch is off. No current's going. If it's a closed circuit, that means the current's going. We're not going to talk about conventional current right now. That's a little confusing for a video, but we'll get back to that. And some things we already know. We remember current. It's measured in I. Volt, so current's like the flow of electricity or charge or electrons. Voltage is like the push, which is caused by a difference in charge. Power, nothing new. Just before, as like before, it was a joule per second, so it's the rate at which we use um, energy or the amount of work we do in a certain amount of time. Resistance is like the friction we talked about, and energy is just um, the amount of joules. And we're going to kind of work backwards um, from that. Usually it's easier to look at the power and get the energy, but... So in these problems, they're fairly straightforward. Uh, we have all our equations. Uh, v equals I R. Or I'm sorry. V equals I R over there. Then we have P equals V I. Feel free to go through the units and see why that's power. Uh, see where the um, joules per second comes in. Um, or we can use this other unit here. Or other equation, sorry. Um, and then we have our electrical power. Now, some of these are rearranged differently just out of mere function. We looked at power before as being energy or change in energy per time. This is just rearranged differently. So I don't think there's really any need to go through each one with you. There are answers on Schoology um, and solutions. Um, there's only three variables, so you're given each one in the problem and just which equation will work. Just try and um, be consistent with writing the units. That's the important part in this uh, unit, no pun intended, just so you understand what we're actually looking. Is it the push? Is it the resistance? Is it like how quickly the, the charges are moving or how many charges are moving? So if you have questions with that, feel free to um, send me an email. Um, or school G message um, with that. So have a great rest of your day.